take it away, Kelvin. Where do we begin? All right. So um, I think okay, we do have nine participants. That is cool. So um, I think we so still are we still uh, getting to ask questions in the Discord channel, or anyone could just ask questions here. Let's just take any questions we can find. Okay. So I think Luke already have one for you. Yeah. On Discord. So I'm gonna read that out right about now. So he, he made a reference to like a Trello board. So I think I would need to open the link to see what's happening there. But this is the question. Yeah, so question for Mike. What's the status of the Trello sales roadmap? What's the best way of getting involved in helping out with sales future development? Yeah, the, the Trello roadmap is kind of like that section at the, the back of your pantry that's been there for like it's kind of like been hiding behind the few cans of soup and uh and like you know there's some good stuff back there but like oh it's a little out of date so that's about where trello's at um as far as as far as what's going to happen with sales like so right now we are prioritizing stability and practical use so what that means is every week we do a roundup of like okay what's new in the github repo as far and right now we look at specifically issues uh just because that's what we can handle uh, on a week to week basis um and then we we look and see okay what's new and then like let's just run through a response of everything so that's the community manager uh eric and then rachel who's kind of our, our go-to lead maintainer and then me uh there to just basically dispense as much uh information and in context as i can about um about various issues and to help make quick decisions um so yeah, so that's kind of the entry point right now is just like issues and we focus mostly on like let's triage uh, anything that is um, high enough priority that it's going to affect somebody that's using sales and production right so like. If there's a, a bug that's a documented feature isn't working, then we we fix that feature or at the very least help provide a workaround and then document that workaround. Um, if there's a performance issue that's affecting a real world use case like same thing um okay. question same thing if it's a a new feature there's a completely new way of doing things like uh we talk about it more and we try to shepherd it into like a pr that can get merged um but in general i think yeah the answer to your question is github issues and then uh, just be sure to to explain your use case so we can make sure that sales is um, always tied to the stuff that people need to do um, in the real world okay that's good. So I think we do have Ezra here and um, Luke Heath. Can, okay. Hi. hi, Ezra. Yeah, hi, Kelvin. Okay, so nice to have you here. Same here. Yeah, sure. So, hey, guys. I'm here as well. What's up, Mike? What's up? Hi, Luke. Okay, hey, so, well, do okay we could even start on a note if any of the speaker have like a question for mike or mike you have any question for the speakers so we get to be interactive on our talks so uh, i i thought i saw you on um was it um luke's talk you had like some questions or anything on the talks yeah i mean i think a lot of really good stuff came up in the in the q and a's during some of the talks uh and i i think uh maybe maybe what we could do is just like revisit what the talks were real quick and like high level and and maybe if we remember any questions related to them um okay. we could go into them would, would that work oh uh, sure sure okay. okay yes okay so there was this one but i think that one was directed at rachel so the question is so maybe any of the speaker could like have an idea so yeah. let me quickly fetch that out i think the 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 attendee also had to cross post on the event discussion so i am hunting okay all right Okay. So this so, is about Rachel stock. So just this this is uh building real time direct messages with sales, right? Yes. Yeah, cool. So okay. I, yeah, I'm looking for the protocol. Okay, yeah. So so the the question is of the sort 
how would you do that like um, a username is typing so in a real time dm we will get to see kelvin is typing for example how would you achieve that mm. yeah, yeah so it's like status right it's like there's it's kind of like level one is like presence like are you online and like level two is like status like what are you doing right now um okay. and uh yeah so i think what I would do, and just uh, there's different ways to do it that are not necessarily incompatible um, with each other, but like I would I would have something in the database that tracks the status of a given user, um, and I would have that actually be truly reflected uh, whenever you start typing. Like it actually updates the database, okay. um, at least to start with, right? And then you might you know if you find challenges with that approach, you could always um use use another like a cache like redis but i don't i don't think you really need to for unless you're just dealing with a huge 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 amount of traffic um so i think yeah i think i would update in the database and i'd probably use the resourceful pub sub to at the same time blast out a socket message that the change has occurred that now someone is typing and then if you want to be able to time that out right which is which is kind of more of the challenge that's a uh, that's a little trickier. Um, the the go to thing I would recommend is using like a very frequently run scheduled job to check to see, hey, are there any, you know, if we're tracking like last started typing at as like a JS timestamp in the database, like Unix epoch milliseconds, right, as a number, for example, then I might have like a, a job that runs every, I don't know, I, I would be lazy at first and make it run every 10 minutes. So at least someone doesn't get stuck with the is typing forever. Um, and then I would, uh, and I would have that job swap out or like change their status back if enough time had elapsed. Um, and then I think I would also, anytime when they hit enter and actually submit their chat, I would also update the status to make it so they're no longer typing. Nice. Okay, got it. Thank you. On that note, so uh, okay, another question would be, how would you hook up type ORM? and TypeScript for transpiling, not at runtime, to sales. So I haven't done that, but if you want to do anything that's not at runtime and it's like a build time thing, um, I would suggest updating the NPM script for the one that's either um, NPM run lint. If you start to have a really complicated build, like on the fleet website, actually, we, uh, we have the documentation compiling uh, and that's actually, we use a GitHub action for that. And I think we changed it so that like, there is a build for prod scripts. Um, but I think that's just in NPM. So if, if I started needing like a lot of stuff, I might make a sales script so I could use JavaScript, but otherwise I might just paste some bash stuff in there and get it working. Cool, got it. So I, so there is a question coming in from the Discord channel, but I, I do have a personal, okay, like my own question for Ezra. So Ezra, could you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear okay. you. Okay. So it does um, Paystack like have, have any interest of like having maybe like a blog where we get to like show us a little bit of how they use sales so we could learn from it. Yeah, I, I think I think we recently started becoming serious about um, writing on like some sort of engineering blog. I know that. Nice. Um, yeah, and I imagine in like the coming weeks or months or something, yes, uh, we'll get to see um, basically us writing about things that we care about. Um, yeah, and if that's if that's also if uh, the framework um, features. Um, very highly in any of them yeah as well we'll be very happy to write about that so yeah <laughs> why is my awesome. profile <laughs> oh, I, just, <laughs> I just wanted to see the cats oh okay oh, yeah. like on a like a side note love your cats Ezra. every single one thank you <laughs> every single yeah. one Okay, so I, I'm going to come back to you as I still have some questions, but let's see. Okay, so um, I think the TypeScript question keeps coming up, and uh, I just got that asked again. Okay, so Mike, do you like have like maybe a suggestion? 
for yes for types typescript i'm type orm i don't know what type orm is but if you want to use any kind of build time checking in sales i would add it to that uh i would add it to that build script okay the build script okay got it and that lets that gives you control basically right so you know sales does some stuff when you lift it and you uh uh kelvin you mind muting for a sec while you're, while you're not talking i think you got some background noise thank you so sales uh sales lifts in development mode and in production mode and goes through two different kind of paths and you know there's different environments like realistically you'll have your staging environment your production environment and you'll have your local development environment and sometimes you have more but i don't know if you need them um Anyway, so those those environments they they lift and mostly what happens in sales core is asset compilation if you have the grunt hook turned on. Um, otherwise, sales like pretty much doesn't you know there's the bootstrap function and there's all kinds of stuff in sales you can use to run code at various times, but in the end of the day you want to have control over when your uh, when your build step runs like when do your when do your tests run uh, like what's going to happen when this code goes through your continuous integration on GitHub like. Um, nowadays GitHub Actions or Workflows or whatever they're called, um, or Circle CI or something like that. Um, and if you put it in your build script, you are able to run that at any time you want, right? Like if you live in a world of Chef or Ansible, you can use the build script from there. Um, so really it's just a matter of control. So I would just say anything you're trying to do, uh, don't try to, uh, anything you're trying to do at build time, don't get like, don't get sucked into the fact that oh this is sales so there's a certain sales specific way to do it you can just put it um put it in the build script like you would do as anything else all right i got one for i got one for you ezra oh wow okay cool <laughs> what uh so what's next for you man after uh I mean, to the extent you can, you can talk about it. Like what's, what's holding your interest these days? Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, so it's, uh, I would, I would say it's on multiple levels. Um, on one hand, I would say just understanding humans and human relationships and whatnot. Um, and I think extending that or applying that at first stack um, also just means getting more deliberate finding avenues to be more deliberate about our culture um yeah and and um yeah and in a way that it can outlast us because like the company is growing rapidly at this point it's no longer um uh what's it called like 10 to 15 to 20 people that are on the same page right it's uh, about 170 people from multiple cultures and whatnot um yeah multiple continents yeah so yeah, it's um, I guess like it's it's yeah, basically figuring out a way to like still keep the unit as close knit as it is and as it was in the early days, um, in a way that allows work to like just flow seamlessly, means understanding, yeah, trying to like understand how humans just yeah. So I guess that has been fascinating. Uh, that's been one fascinating bit. On the other hand, um, I think um i've also like just grown to like multiple phases of like leadership um within the company so like from hands-on engineer uh, to engineering manager taking engineering management responsibilities um so yeah you know like just yeah just like playing multiple roles uh, in the company and whatnot and i mean at this point now that we are like more mature and have a lot more um structure in place with like people who actually like good very good at what they do and all that that now gives me um some sense of freedom i guess to go back to like things that excite me um so the kind of things i was excited at at the beginning which is just playing with stuff right and all that so um i have like the liberty at the moment of like joining any team that i want to join um i like um, taking on a project any project i i, I want to within set team and all that and execute within the team. And I guess that's been exciting. Um, one of the things I, and just to like speak to that, um, I think one of the things I picked up uh, last quarter, last quarter actually uh, was, I guess, so um, at the moment we don't uh, make use of like um, an API gateway. Um, so like 
say exact. So like um, venue is we're, we're basically thinking of like um, there are a couple of like logic that we felt we wanted to like place at the edge of um, yeah if you had a pistag.co and whatnot. And we started looking at uh, using AW, uh, AWS's API Gateway, uh, um, should I call it service or something for that? Yeah. Um, and that has been fun, like learning how that works, um, learning how to use authorizers to like um, inject custom logic on that, in, on that front, building our own framework of some sort uh, to allow uh, the engineering team like ex um, extend via um, the means of modules and whatnot and how the modules show up, defining what they should look like, defining how they should interact with like uh, the main authorizer um, code and whatnot. Yeah, I think that's just been, yeah, some fun thing I've been up to uh, in the last quarter and all that. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't Stripe know what to, uh, yeah. Stripe sets a high bar is. there for, Stri at Stripe they have such good docs or their reputation for their documentation is, is strong. Yes. They have like, such well-formed shapes for their agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they are actually like um, a very good example we're looking up to at the beginning as well, when it comes to like, just how do we communicate on, on our API docs exactly like the language and how to like get people to actually understand how to like, uh, yeah, wrangle, uh, yeah, make use of the Paystack API um, and blend it to their will and, all, and whatnot, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thank you, Ezra. Well, I'm still, I have a question for you or oh, Mike as well. Sure. So, but I'm kind of interested in how does, okay, how does Paystack test sales? Like, do you, can you just give us like a little overview of how you set up tests for your see your actions help us or whatnot? Yeah, um, I think I think that has actually even gone through a bunch of um, evolution over time now to the point that I'm not sure that I can speak to what it's like today, <laughs> today at the moment. Uh, yeah, but, um, but I know we use, uh, we're using Mocha before, or I should like call it Mocha. Um, but we eventually yeah. we switched to Jest um, sometime in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I think um, the chatter in the last couple of weeks or something is that the, one to, the team wants to like switch to a uh, switch back, switch back to like a mocha break based framework or something. Yeah, but that's still like ongoing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jest mocks are a little, uh, they're a little bit much. Um, it's easy to get, like Jest is like really, really high quality, but it has so many features. And and when you start getting into mocking things, like the order that you require files, if you're doing any manual requiring starts to matter. Um, so yeah. I've seen that go off the rails before. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, well, still on testing. So Ezra or Mike could go on. So, um, I think someone asked how to apply TDD and BDD in sales. So I think that would be test driven development and behavior driven development in sales. Yeah. So can we, can I take a crack at not exactly answering the question first and just doing a little real talk? Far away. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to put you on the spot Ezra, but, uh, but I, you know, Feel free to chime in if you if you uh, if you feel it's appropriate to comment on this. But um, TDD is is good in some places and is I mean it's really it, I think it would be good if time was unlimited. It would be good in all places, right? Like knowing what it is you want code to do before you write it is great. It's the equivalent of UI first development, right? It's like if you know what you want for your users, you can make the best decisions about how to implement and architect a product. Um, for them. And the same thing is true as if, you know, if we're talking about the little riddle that defines what a function actually does, it really helps to know exactly how that function is going to be called and all the stuff that will be passed into it, what it can return, what it can throw, um, any side effects that you want it to have, right? So that's all good in theory. In practice, um, you're trying to ship something, right, of value for users. And at the end of the day, a human in one form or another, whether it's a human automating something or it's a human actually pointing and clicking, a human running a script, somebody's going to run your code. 
Um, and so I try to think about like that experience first and foremost when I'm when I'm considering testing, which means I always prioritize manual tests first, and then after that into end tests. Um, there is there is a place for I, mean, I can tell you all like you know working on a lot of the internals of sales and especially waterline, especially waterline and anything related to type safety and data types, tested the crap out of that. Tons of TDD makes a ton of sense. Um, when it comes to like building an API, right, a new API, like uh, on a small team, uh, I don't know if I would even bother writing tests until I, you know, if anything, I'm, I'm making that API to fulfill the needs of some user interface or some like API driven product that I'm creating. Um, so I think I would like get it working test it myself, use it myself, and get it into the hands of some real users before I even thought about testing. Um, that doesn't at all really answer the question, because uh, there's also a time when it's like, hey, we're a big team, and like we need to be writing tests for everything, and I think it totally makes sense. Um, I just don't hear people advocate often enough for the like, hey, maybe testing is one aspect. Um, so I just wanted to make that argument. Yeah, I think that's actually um, a good way to see it as well. Um, I mean, um, it's, I, I would say like in the early days of this stack anyways, it wasn't like we were uh, doing very strict CDD. Uh, but over time, of course, as the team started growing bigger and whatnot, it was it became something to at least uh, uh, try to put in place um, as some sort of guardrail to like just help ensure that uh, we are properly testing code before it like goes into production and, and all. Yeah, but like um, of late, uh, we've actually started investing heavily uh, in integration or end-to-end -end tests uh, before, uh, before, what's it called? Before, before deployment to production. And, uh, and I think that's been like more, just to your point as well, uh, you are developing for um, users or for people who are going to like make use of this thing. There's unexpected behavior. Um, that you want out of it and you need to like ensure or at least confirm that that works and yeah so that's what we like just uh, uh, yeah we have like yeah basically like have the playbooks and then just run them before uh, to ensure that end to end all the services work well together nothing is broken and yeah so. cool thanks thanks Mike and Nexia but so um I, I i do have my own questions and uh, checking if there are any in the backlog so there's none so uh, okay um firstly ezra are you a type script person as a guest huh? i said as a guest what in not a no, type script like, person as a, yeah because I think um, there is so, this. So I would, I would, yeah, I would say I'm a, I would say I'm a TypeScript admirer. Um, I've not had to like write a lot of TypeScript lately. Um, like mo and most of my experience has been in, uh, yeah, regular JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm not a TypeScript person. Just to get out of the out of the way. <laughs> Why not? Well. I don't know. I've tried TypeScript. I get the idea, like typed JavaScript, right? But I I don't see myself wanting to use it that much. Or like the like the way it's being admired these days, like everyone wants to like move to TypeScript. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel that that way for TypeScript. Is that is the that moment. a reason? Well, I really don't um so i think that typescript solves a problem that knowing javascript well won't happen in the first place mm. yes so to me yeah yeah so to me i think if we spend time knowing javascript the language itself we might not need typescript that much because i've seen uh, like there are these tweets where you get to see the, like a lot of the, um, TypeScript fields. So where you are using TypeScript, but you, you don't really understand JavaScript itself. So the type is not really working at that point. So I do believe, so if I spend more time knowing JavaScript, I wouldn't need TypeScript. So that's my own opinion. So emphasis on the opinion part. 
Yeah, and there's runtime type checking, right? That's that it's easy to it's easy to overlook the importance of that because sometimes you just you just can't know because like if a request parameter comes in, like you're not going to know at build time what kind of data that is, right? So at yeah. least at the framework level, and then really even in your your application code, there's going to be times where you're looking at untrusted data and you need to confirm the type. So one mis a common misconception I've seen is people thinking that TypeScript will solve that for them, and it just it just can't. Yeah. I think philosophically, exactly. TypeScript is something that maybe ought to just work its way into JS core eventually. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems yeah. I have with it is just the overhead, right? Like if I'm gonna go fishing, right. uh, which no offense, I you know I have plenty of meat guilt. So um, I, I'm uh, very <laughs> sad about fish I've killed in the past. But anyway, so I've, <laughs> but nonetheless, let's delete it. So let's say if I was going fishing, okay. uh, and I and I'm uh, and I have like my tackle box, and I got like a like a big fishing pole, and like there's a certain amount of prep that's reasonable for the importance of this fishing trip to me, right? And there's a certain amount of time, there's a certain situations where maybe like, okay, getting the tackle box together and getting the fishing rod together makes sense. I think if I was doing that every day, right, it'd be really easy to go for a fishing trip if you're all set up with your gear mm -hmm. um, and you have it ready to go and you're like, you have discipline about it. When you come back, like you clean it off and you like put it in the same place. Like right now, TypeScript requires all of that. And so I feel like there's a pretty, you got to really love fishing. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. I, I think we're going to stay away from the TypeScript talk just a little bit. Ezra, we do have a couple of questions for you and PitchTag. So I'm going to go top of the list. So Ezra, there's a lot of buzz these days on microservices. What else sort of architecture does Paystack run on currently. Do you want to take a stab at that or? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll say I'll say we run a what? <laughs> not definitely not microservices uh, because they are not microservices, but they are services nonetheless. Um, yeah, and they all like just work together, um, holding uh, multiple domains, uh, as the case may be. And there's some work and, and to speak to like what the future of um, the architecture looks like um, because of the way, like the way we've also like organized our en the engineering organization um, as a whole has also like evolved over time. And I think one of the things that we, one of the things that we settled into um, as at last year, January was to basically have um, the idea of product delivery teams where each team actually like has a very singular concern and can operate autonomously within the bigger organization. But now, um, ab ability to operate autonomously is crippled when um, a lot of your work relies on shared code bases across multiple teams and all that. So one of the things that we've, um, what's it called? One of the things that we've been doing uh, for some time now, anyways, is to like figure out how to like break out concerns um, from like um, some of our monolithic services um uh, into like isolated um yeah into their own services right uh, uh, so like it team, teams uh, um that are handling fraud for instance and whatnot can like have all of that logic like separated like into their own service and uh, what happens on the on the services that require um what's it called that but that basically require like a verdict or whatever or a score or some sort before like move on moving on with the transaction, just just call the service to like, let it know like, oh yes, here's a transaction I'm trying to process. And should I go ahead or not? And then that does everything. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, so we there will be, there will definitely be more and more single or reduced consent services in the future com um, compared to like um, the more multi monolithic architecture that we have today. <laughs> I don't know if that's, um, addresses the question, Gideon. Abi Oyeka. Yeah. Yes, that should be Oyeka, yeah. 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 I think that should do it. Thank you, Ezra. So I, I think yeah. you seen the next question is still addressed to you, but I don't think I quite get it. So maybe you do. So does Paystack have any ML pipeline for testing or what not? Now, or it, okay, so I guess it's asking if you have ML pipeline now or you tend to do in future. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would say I would say maybe no, not right now, <laughs> but uh, definitely intend to do in the future. 
Um, yeah. Fraud comes to mind. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. So guys, you have like a minute, like some more time with Mike and Ezra. Use it wisely. Bring the questions coming. Ask your app out. Now you have the time. What's the first other service you made, Ezra, over there? Besides when you had to split one off. Oh, uh, so I think it was great. That, that would be our rails. Um, basically the um, the service that handles so everything about like connection to like um, financial partners and whatnot was like just wrapped into like a different service first of all yeah so it was our API which is where everyone like address uh, yeah reaches out to and then when the API request uh, requires communicating with an external party, like a bank to like fulfill the transaction or something. Yes, then it goes through the second service. Yeah, so that was like the, that was like the first logical split. Uh, yeah, and then afterwards, more splits. Yeah, it almost sounds like you know if you got your sales app here and you got this like dangling, you have all these you know you have your actions right coming in exactly, and you got these helpers that normally are just sitting there dangling, and then you kind of went yeah. like. <laughs> and then <laughs> chopped off, <laughs> chopped off yeah. the helpers, and now we got these this other little service down here. Exactly, wow. exactly that. Got it. Nice, nice. nice. That is good. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any questions coming in right now. Good. I think we're close to time. So, thank yeah. you for man, Kelvin. You've done an amazing job putting together this conference, and like. It's, it's, first of all, it's just crazy how we met because we just met online, I think, like on social media at some point. And, and uh, your passion for sales and, and your passion for kind of all of it. It's, it's funny how much, of the, how much of the same philosophy overlap there is across this community. And I think, I think we're all people that want to ship things, get things done quickly, and are mostly focused on outcomes, right? Um, so I think that you've done a great job just like evangelizing um, practical, result minded engineering work man so thank you for for doing this and uh and great job organizing this was all super rough of course uh but like hey it's the first the first time we like we barely uh you know we we sponsored it like the last second and you're doing some like bitcoin was getting sent around <laughs> just to, to get everything over there and it's also just so cool how this ended up uh this ended up being centered like and everything being in uh in wat time like just by by coincidence and there's people from all over the world um that were able to stop in so i just wanted to say thank you for for putting this all together on behalf of the whole community yeah my pleasure sales like i said in my talk sales changed my life really <laughs> uh now I just want to see the the sales framework and also the community grow. So I'll do my part because like a very good um, community I admire a lot is the Laravel community. They so I think you you get to see the the framework itself and you get to see these people that are actually carrying it up. So I just want to like have that replication in sales where we get to have advocates, people building stuff on top of sales, building products and businesses. So that was just like my vision. I just want more like Nigerian like myself to build with sales. So yeah. So thank you for making sales first off because no sales, no sales conference, you know. So. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. So well, for those of you that just joined, a recording of this Q&A session will go online. Um, we had some technical difficulties at the front, so it might do a, just a touch of editing to chop that off. Um, but uh, yeah, just look out for this on YouTube and uh, feel free to, if you have any questions, like join the SalesCast community um, on Discord and, uh, and chime in. There's also the Gitter channel. Um, so. Mm -hmm drop in to get what you need done and then the, the way to the best way to get something addressed in sales is make a github issue yeah sure so i think we are we are the mark right so yeah, yeah. so thank you ezra thank you mike and um thank you kelvin
So hopefully see Thank you on your first well. yeah, sales conf. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, yes. I thank you, everyone else, for sticking with us. Yeah, sure. Everyone, thank you. Right, bye, everyone. Yeah, bye.